بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى سآله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to this short reminder entitled A Dutiful Child During this reminder we'll provide you a brief introduction our sources of inspiration narrate a beautiful story recap the key lessons learnt and provide you some further reading on this particular topic so as an introduction, Islam teaches us to be kind and compassionate to all those around us, that a special place in our hearts is reserved for who? Reserved for our mothers. With regards to our sources of inspiration, what better sources of inspiration are there than the Qur'an and Sunnah? And from the Qur'an, we've chosen Surah Luqman, Surah 31, in particular verses 14 and 15. This surah has some beautiful advice, especially from verses 13 to 19, but we're going to focus today on verses 14 and 15, which relate directly to our treatment of our parents, in particular our mothers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And we have enjoined upon man concerning his parents. His mother bore him in weakness upon weakness, and his weaning is in two years. Give thanks to me and to your parents, and to me is your return. Say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is painting us a picture of, of the hardship and trials that the mother went through during uh, pregnancy, during childbirth, during bringing the early years of raising the child. She went through a lot of hardship and she bore with patience. And because of this, she's deserving of your of your care and your attention and your love. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is then reminding us at the end of this particular verse, and to me is the return. You will all, we will all return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will be asked about our treatment of our parents. <clears throat> And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on in verse 15. But if they strive to make you ascribe with me a partner to which you have no knowledge, then do not obey them. And befriend them in this world kindly and follow the path of the, of the one who repents to me. Then to me will be your return and I shall tell you of what you used to do. So again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now is telling us that um, even if your parents were to push you towards shirk, a great sin in Islam to push you towards shirk, then don't obey them in this particular issue, but befriend them. Sahib Huma, be their companion in this world. And again, why? Because you will be then asked about this on your Qiyamah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will again hold you to account of how you treated your parents. And so just to summarize here, treatment of your parents, especially your mother, because of the, and Allah's not only asking us to do it, he's given us reasons why we should do this. And then, mashallah, this is a beautiful introduction to the story that we'll go through for the remainder of this topic, which is the story of Awais al-Qarni. And what a beautiful story this is. This is a story, it's a heartwarming story of patience and compassion and devotion and a beautiful example of how to care for, listen to and love your mother. Now we'll focus on four key areas of Awais al-Qarni's life, who he was, how he came about to accept Islam, an opportunity he had to meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his encounter with Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. So who was he? From the information we have, Awais al-Qarni is not a Sahabi but a Tabi'i, meaning he never actually met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He lived around the time of the Prophet with his companions but he himself never actually sat with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. He came from the town of Murad, the tribe of Qarn in, the, in Yemen. He had a sick mother whom he cared for, and he had leprosy, which is a disease of the skin, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cured him, but for a space of a dirham on his shoulder. How he came about to accept Islam. One night, he, there was no light in the house. He came from a poor background. It was him and his mother, just his sick mother. His father had passed away early in his life. Just him and his mother in a house. In this particular occasion, one night, they had no light. And because his mother was blind, she was already used to being able to get around and find her way around the house. So he, on this particular night, Awais al-Qarni himself had to follow his mother. He usually took care of his mother. She, he had to follow her around. So sometime after this particular incident, some Muslim envoys visited Yemen and Awais overheard them reciting the following verses from Surat An-Nur. Surat An-Nur, which is verse 
uh, Surah 24, and the verse in particular is verse 40, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Or as the darkness on a vast abysmal sea, there he is covered by a wave, above which is a wave, above which is a cloud, layer upon layer of darkness. When he holds out his hand, he can hardly see it. And he who, for whom Allah has not appointed light, for him there is no light. SubhanAllah, what Allah is saying here, similar to what he, how he explained the, the from Surah Luqman, rather than just telling us, be good to your parents, rather than just telling us, if there's no light um, that Allah wants for you, there will be no light. He's given us an example, painting us a picture so we can understand, telling us that imagine you're in a sea, dark, overcast night, a wave envelops the boat, yet another wave. You hold out your hand and you can hardly see your hand. Given as an example of how, in this situation, scared and frightened, if Allah doesn't appoint you light, if He doesn't find for you a way out, then there will be no way out. And SubhanAllah, this verse really touched the way Al-Qarni. He thought back to the night and reflected how we're told him in the Quran, how Allah regularly tells us, reflect, think, ponder. He thought and he, he realized that what happened on that night where he himself, who could see, had to follow his blind mother around. SubhanAllah. And on hearing this verse, he accepted Islam, alhamdulillah. So an opportunity to meet the Prophet Sallallahu So Awais really wanted to go, after he's accepted Islam, he really wants to go and meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to learn from him. But he, as we said, he had to take, take care of his mother. It was just him and his mother. He need, She needed his care. And Medina in them days, not like today, where you can jump on a flight, be there within a few hours. It was maybe two weeks, three weeks, possibly even four weeks and longer. When you, if you didn't have a horse, maybe not even a camel in the Oasis Al Qani situation, he came from a poor background, he, he might not have had the opportunity. So eventually he agreed with his mother. He would go, but he could only stay but a day or two in Medina and he'd have to return. So he set out and he arrived in Medina, but he was told that the Prophet wasn't there and he might he may be returning within the next day or two. So he waited, but the Prophet still hadn't returned. What would he do? Now let's imagine, put yourselves in this situation, you've travelled a long distance, halfway around the globe, to meet your favourite celebrity, your favourite sports star, football player, your favourite actor. You get there and you're told they're not here but they'll be here shortly, just wait a little bit. So you wait, you're thinking about all the money you spent, all the years you've waited to see this person. Then you get a call from your parents, your mother calls you. Their son, daughter, I need you back here, I need your help on something, I really need you, please return as soon as possible, come back now. What would you do? Imagine in that situation. I'm sure all of us. Oh, why? Let me stay a little bit longer. I've spent so much money. I've come here so I'm so close. It's been a long time. I've been waiting years. Please, please. And you'd argue and you'd 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 you'd, you'd, um, you'd get very upset. Now imagine in this situation. It's not any celebrity, any any any, any um, actor or, or sports hero, or it's the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Awais al Qarni has the opportunity to sit with him, to learn from him directly. He's, he's in touching distance. He can see. He can see. It's right there. But what does he do? He's a dutiful son. Does he agree to return home to his mother, or does he stay and wait and eventually meet the Prophet Now, if you were listening earlier when we mentioned about a Sahabi and a Tabi'i, we said he was a Sahab uh, Tabi'i, not a Sahabi, and we explained this that he never actually met the Prophet So, in this particular occasion, he obviously chose to return to his mother and uphold his agreement that he had with his mother. So Umar ibn al-Khattab, a lot of what we know of Awais al-Qarni is from a, a famous hadith where Umar ibn al-Khattab who said, I heard Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, saying, there would come to you Awais bin Amr of Qarn, a branch of the Murai tribe, along with the reinforcement of the people of Yemen. He had been suffering from leprosy, which he would have been cured for, but for a spate of a dirham. His treatment with his mother would have been very kind. If he would take an oath in the name of Allah for something, he would honour it. Ask him to beg forgiveness for you from Allah, in case it is possible for you. Now imagine this, Umar has been told this, never met this person, never seen him before. Prophet is saying, telling him about this person who what? Who prays all night, who reads Quran all night, tahajjud, fast regularly, gives a loss in charity. No, we're told that he's dutiful to his mother. He's good to his mother. He honors his oath and he's patient with the sickness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afflicted him with. So did Umar eventually meet Awais al-Qarni? It was a long wait. Umar used to go out during the Hajj each year and ask the group from Yemen if Awais was amongst them. 
Each year that he'd be told no. Finally, in the tenth year of asking, he was told that a waiter was with them and somebody pointed him out. He went to him. Now the Amir al-Mu'mineen, Umar is now the Amir al-Mu'mineen in charge of the vast Muslim empire, expanding all the way to Jerusalem, to Egypt. And he, he, he approached the waiter and he asked, Are you a waiter bin Amr? Yes. From Qaran? Yes. From Murad? Yes, was the reply. Did you have leprosy for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cured you? Yes, was the reply. Except for a dirham-sized patch on your shoulder. Again, yes, was the reply. And Umar asked to see it, and he was showed it. Do you have a sick mother for whom you are obedient to? Again, yes, was the reply. Then you are the one that the Prophet ﷺ told us about. And Umar made the request that SubhanAllah gives me goosebumps each time I hear it. This is Umar ibn al-Khattab, anhu, the great Sahabi, Amir al-Mu'mineen, second of the Khulafa al-Rashidun, speaking to Awais al-Qarni, a poor tabi'i from Yemen that he's never met before. Imagine the waiter situation. He's looking up at this Amir and, and thinking, why is, he, why is he asking me? What, what's going on here? And then what does Umar ask him? Seek forgiveness for me. He asks a waste to seek forgiveness for him. SubhanAllah. And what's a waste's response? It's a humble response. He's taken aback. He says, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, you are the Sahabi. You are Amir al Mu'mineen. You are Umar ibn al Khattab. I should be asking you to seek forgiveness for me. No, says Umar. The Prophet ﷺ told me, if I meet you, I should ask you to seek forgiveness for me. And he went on, Umar, to ask him if he needed any assistance in his travels. Uh, um, you know, uh, Umar, obviously the Emir, he can help him, provide uh, easier access for him. But always being the humble person he was, he liked to be amongst the poor, he liked to travel lightly, and he, re- he declined. And he even asked Umar anhu to, uh, not to mention this to anybody, because he didn't want the attention. And SubhanAllah, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor Awais al-Qarni in this manner? Why did he give him this honor um, that the, the, Prophet would, uh, the Prophet would tell Umar, go and ask him to seek forgiveness for you? Why? Because he was dutiful to his parents, to his dutiful to his mother, to his sick mother. He, he bore with patience the illness that Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala afflicted him with, and he honored his oath. So as a quick reminder and a recap, a great reward awaits those who are patient, with whatever may befall them, be it an illness, a hardship, or a difficult task. In Oasis' case, he bore many years of patience with his sick mother, took care of her, put her first all the time, gave priority for her, always abiding by his oath and honoring his oath, being patient with the sickness. Now look at, again, our situation. Maybe sometimes our parents ask us to help around the house to do something, and we get annoyed, we, slam our, we stamp our feet, we slam the door, we, we argue. For what? For little things. We should be patient. Remember Awais al-Qarni and, and, and remember the honor that Allah placed upon him just because of his uh, duty to his parents and to his mother. We should be caring for, for our mother. Listen and obey her as she is deserving of our care and attention, as we are told in Surah Luqman. Extend this care and attention to, the, to your father, siblings and wider family and also to all those in need in your community. Because again, we are told in the Quran, مَا أَنزَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Oh Muhammad, we haven't sent you but a mercy for all of mankind. And be humble. Very important. Be humble. Do these acts for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't do these things for any worldly gain. There's lots of um, things out there, books, links to um, online courses that touch on this topic of do, being dutiful to your parents, being good to your parents. Two in particular YouTube channels. MashaAllah, Umar Suleiman Superstar Series has a great little mind on Uwais al-Qarni, as does Sheikh Yasser al-Qadi. Again, another beautiful, short, concise, uh, succinct reminder on Uwais al-Qarni. Numerous uh, verses in the Qur'an, specifically these verses I've listed here, again, tell us about how being dutiful to our parents, being commanded to be good to them in this world. And finally, numerous hadith out there. We've heard many of us have heard these relating to how we should be good to our parents, especially our mother, and the benefits and barakah in this. Zakallah khair. Thank you for listening. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us amongst those who are patient, amongst those who are dutiful to our parents, amongst those who honor our oath. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.